there is no music in the back of the police car. And it's so surreal when you hear that music that you love listening to so much when that music is playing whilst going through a traumatic situation. Um, it can be anything. You just got cut real bad and that music is playing. And you like, turn that shit the fuck off. Nigga, my whole stomach is coming open. I'm shot in the neck and that shit and, and the song's still playing in full imagine this. Like no, you just got shot or cut, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? You bleeding out in future. Fuck up some commas. Let's fuck up some commas, yeah. And you'll really get the real perspective of what the fuck they saying. It's not until that time till you're in a truly traumatic situation and you hear the music to where you're fully conscious of it. To where you can't move around and you can't act. You need help now. First ten thousand that was sentimental. That's sentimental. Make that first ten thousand that was I remember. Bitch, I remember. Make my first ten thousand, yeah, bitch, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Hey, all this shit. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I am Al Conseco, fearless leader of Al Nation. I can just sleep over here. Um, and this is. If you do not have your Are You Serious T-shirt. You already know what to do. You'll have a commercial coming here soon. Don't worry about it. Yellow Beezy is on every platform imaginable. Every platform. Every platform that you can think of. He's on the platform. He's there. Um, was he there before he got shot? First of all, let me let me tell you how it is. <clears throat> this story he's telling about, you know what I'm saying, what took place and shit like that, it's a it's a farce. He's telling the story like this, trying to maybe get the shooters to come out of hiding, uh claim the shooting and shit like that. Um I had the fire with me, but uh, the police got there and we called and, and you know what I'm saying, all the good shit like this. And there's another nigga that got like, like with the baby. It's just so much shit. The baby shoot a nigga in Walmart. This nigga right here got the fire in his lap, but niggas hit him 24 times and all this crazy ass shit. And he got the call woofing at niggas just on some superhero shit, whatever like that, and all this amazing ass, magical ass shit. And when niggas do shit like this, it's so that you can ease the shooters out of hiding and make them tell the real story. Because it's only y'all two that's going to know the real story. Um, it, I have an issue with so much with this situation. The, one of the biggest fucking things is this nigga keep on bringing up God. He keep on saying blessed and miracle and all these words, but it's like, my nigga, what the fuck have you done? What are you doing? Are you coming back to the scene screaming praise God in your music? The shit that people listen to? Because what we know is this. The interview has this many views. But your music gets this many views. It gets this many plays. Oh, I done running this shit back. Nobody running back your fucking interviews. In your music, you holler about the same shit that every other fucking street rapper is coming like. You know what I'm saying? You saying the same fucking thing. Gangsta, gangsta, kill, kill. If you don't kill a nigga, you a pussy. Pussy ass nigga, you should have killed me. Uh, plenty of niggas want to kill me. Nigga, fuck it, nigga. I kill a fuck nigga for any disrespect. All this woofing, woofing, gangsta shit. And then you'll come right back behind it and say, it's a miracle, praise God. That's, that's, the, that's the laughable shit that motherfuckers used to do when niggas go up there to get their award. Their whole career is built off of talking about murdering niggas, fucking hoes, selling dope, and killing the community. 
But then you, the first person you think when you go up that motherfucker, I want to thank God for this award because without him, it, it, it wouldn't be possible. You think, then it brings the question forward, what, what God are you talking about? God is a surname. Um, it's a God of war, God of thunder, the God of the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Even though there's, let me stay out of that. Who, what, what God are you talking about? The God of hell? Because that's where you're sending people. When, when niggas recite your shit in jail and shit like that, that say something. Like, this is what I was listening to before I came up in this motherfucker, which led to me being in this motherfucker. And as I told y'all a long time ago, there is no music in the back of the police car. And it's so surreal when you hear that music that you love listening to so much, when that music is playing whilst going through a traumatic situation, um, it can be anything. You just got cut real bad, and that music is playing. And you like, turn that shit the fuck off. Nigga, my whole stomach is coming open. I'm shot in the neck, and that shit, and, and the song's still playing in full. Imagine this. Like, no, you just got shot or cut, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? You bleeding out in future. Fuck up some commas. Let's fuck up some commas, yeah. And you'll really get the real perspective of what the fuck they saying. It's not until that time, till you're in a truly traumatic situation and you hear the music to where you're fully conscious of it. To where you can't move around and you can't act. You need help now. It's not until that time that you can, your mind is clear on what is actually being fucking said. So I do have an issue with it. Secondly, what I have an issue with is everybody picking up on the fuck. All of these, everyone picking up on the other be the story after being shot. In this day and age, with what we have going on with these motherfuckers doing anything to get into this hip hop shit doing anything once niggas start painting their fingernail dressing like hoes putting guns in their mouth with a wedding dress on there's pretty much no more standard anything goes at this point in time um, we've seen people stage fights and stage this and have this make you think this. You know what I'm saying? That's my issue. Which is why we need a guard at the door. Uh, the trap door. The rap door. But knowing that and then seeing an artist like Yellow Beezy who had a song that's number one on the billboards but you still did not invite him. You got an artist like Yellow Beezy who has a number one song and you still don't invite him to your platform. This is for Vlad, this is for The Breakfast Club and anybody else who invites Yellow Beezy up to their fucking place of business only after he gets shot. The message that you're sending is if you get shot and die, we'll play your music. If you get shot and live, we'll bring you up to the station. So either way, me getting shot is a win for me. That's the message that's being, and I, and I, I say this because who's I, this is what I, this is what I'm telling you, man, that brings this shit full circle. Whose idea was this to bring him up there? Why? The question needs to be asked, why in the fuck? Was this nigga not up here prior to this? Hold on a second. Fucking bitch.
Just making sure. Just making sure. Why in the fuck is this his first time being on the show? Yellow Bees, it breaks down shooting accident. Incident. Dallas music. And much more. You don't give a fuck about no... Like, y'all motherfuckers trying to get views like every fucking body else. And that's gimmicky like a motherfucker and it's just scumbag. Too much weird shit going on. God damn. I'm trying to shoot a fucking show and you got it's a dark and stormy night nigga I'm seeing shadows on the door nigga fucking TV come on by itself nigga it's too much going on you didn't bring this nigga up until the worst happened let you know you niggas don't give a fuck about shit and this is what runs the industry if you want to be on top make something happen to yourself this is the mess that's being promoted and it continues to be promoted. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Which forces me to believe that these fucking media companies, every big fucking platform is part of the fucking rap trap. They're part of the fucking rap trap. If a nigga music can't get him to the breakfast club and my success being number one can't get me to the breakfast club how the fuck do I get there well the fuck get shot and you up there instantly soon as you heal now we reaching out like that don't seem fake to nobody is that not fake is that, I'm, I'm asking a question is that not fake so a motherfucker's Charlemagne, Angela Yee, and fucking D DJ Envy, when motherfuckers talk about how fake the industry is, do you feel like you're excluded from that? Do you feel like you play no part in the fakeness, in the unofficial, artificial treating of people? You you send out your, or, or, do, or do you just work in the building and just interview whoever comes there? Do you have no say on who comes there? In that case, can fucking, um, what's your man name from, uh, the Ku Klux Klan? The fucking dude. Bobby fucking Bluegrass. Whatever the fuck the leader of the fucking Ku Klux Klan is. This motherfucker, he can just come up that end. Like, y'all don't give a fuck who comes up that motherfucker. You just interview the motherfuckers. No, nah, y'all gotta fucking say so. You can say, nah, we don't. Y'all are supposed to be into the culture. Why the fuck won't you into the culture when a motherfucker hit number one and yellow bees it? Think about this. But I guess you just playing the game so you don't have to think about it. But also on your end, you part of the fake shit too because you don't believe in that gangster shit that you talk about neither. You are a family person. You are a family nigga. You not about no gangster gangster shit, my nigga. Listen to what the fuck I'm telling you right now. Hey, dog. A lot of you niggas truly believe that you are a hard, tough, gangster nigga because you will defend yourself. My nigga, that's not what gangster is. I got a story I'm finna do in Cleveland of um, some jack boys who went into a plug house, killed his daughter, his 16-year-old daughter first, then I think rolled him around the trunk and then burnt the fucking car. Killed both of them. Like, that's what gangsters do. That's what street niggas do. Real street niggas. Real gangsters. That's what they do. And you niggas make the soundtrack to their life. And they fuck with you because they believe that you on the same type of time that they own. This is how music works. Since we've taken talent out of it. We pull, you remember we pulled the rug of talent from under us 
Now that we're on our ass and there's no talent involved, anybody can get in. And there's no guard at the fucking door so anybody can walk in and just win. They've turned our genre into fucking chaos. But country music don't go through that. Uh, rock music don't go through that. Pop music don't go through that. You have to be nigga. To be a fucking pop artist, a country artist, a rock artist, you come in that bitch and don't know how to strum a fucking guitar or beat a drum. You're not going nowhere. But to be a rapper, all you got to do is say, catch me outside. How about that? Be a little nine-year-old Asian girl, a, a, a whoa fucking Vicky, little fucking Zan or some fucking bullshit. We get the trash. We get the trash. And everybody is part of this bullshit. Everybody's part of it. The reason why NWA was so fucking successful was because niggas believed that they were living that shit. And they were fucking faking it. But that's why it worked. So when you talk about people that weren't talented and shit like that, understand it was something else about them. And niggas have caught on to that. Fucking loopholes. So that's why we have the most trash and we have the most bullshit. This is why you will get the most notification. If you subscribe to every hip-hop channel and, and, and hip-hop blog site and shit like that, you will get the most fucking notifications. About bullshit, negative shit. Because we get all the fucking trash. There's no standard. Big Facts Podcast. I am El Canseco. Make sure you hit that PayPal. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love.